Hey, this is Irene. I've been waiting for you. Thank you for joining me, mixing it up with me right here on The Mix. You're listening to CBiz Media. All right, we are back again with the tea. We have, of course, Dre Bell Rock on the line with us. Hello, hello, everybody. Woo, I'm back. Yeah, now we have also a special guest. We have our very own Miss London. Hey, hey, thanks for having me. This is my mom's, the lady that started it all. I got to give her a lot of love. Oh, thank you. So, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, who wants to start first? Do we, Dre, did you want to start off a story first, or did you want me? Yeah, I'll start off, let's start off just talking about the Lizzo situation, because I really wanted to talk about that. Yeah, and I, I really like Lizzo, and that's my girl, and she, Lizzo loves to show her body. Like, even if before this incident happened, if you look at her social media, Lizzo, she's not showing boobs, but she's showing butt on social media, and Lizzo is not ashamed to show her body, like, I mean, naked body on Instagram, on social media. She's comfortable in her skin, and she actually said, before she became a singer, she was always comfortable in her skin, this is not nothing new, because she became famous, she always been comfortable in her skin, and, and also, if you don't notice about Lizzo, she's from Detroit, she was raised in Detroit, but she moved to Texas later on. She moved, to, she moved to Texas later on, but she's going to be tight. All right, you know that. So, so basically, the Lakers was, she was at the Lakers game, and, um, you know, her, the cheerleaders played her song, Juice, and she got so excited, and she stood up and started dancing, but her outfit, her butt was exposed. And a lot of people was upset about it because they said she's doing too much, why would she be showing that? We don't care who artists, if it was a Rihanna or Lady Gaga or Beyonce, nobody should be showing that much skin and showing their fear back. But Lizzo, this was Lizzo's um, reaction to when people get her with the harsh criticism. She said, if you don't like my butt, you can kiss my butt. But she didn't use the word butt. You can imagine yes, what she, she used. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that Lizzo, I tell you, I, I tell you, I'm, I really like Lizzo too. When she first came out, you know, I saw her. Yeah, I was kind of proud of her. I did she represents the uh, full-figured woman and the African-American woman and just people in general that just want to do what they want to do. And she's good, though. She is a great performing artist, and she's great at what she does. So uh, my opinion on her showing her newness, I'm going like, oh, well. <laughs> I know. Some of the people say, well, you know, shouldn't be doing that in front of the kids and all that kind of thing. It's not like it used to be back in the day when you saw that. So um, I'm not gonna stop loving Z. I'm not gonna stop loving Lizzo because she did what she did. Because Lizzo was moving on up the ladder. Now, I personally wouldn't do nothing like that, but that's not me. That's Lizzo. So okay. I mean, what, just say what's next, you know? And one thing I have to say about Lizzo. Regardless of showing her body and doing this, she was a talented artist. If you listen to her first CD, every track is amazing. She really did a good job. Yeah, she's a, she's a great performer. Great. So, and her, all her performances was not disappointing. She so her vocals was amazing live. Her stage presentation was amazing live. She's the real deal. So I was just thinking that every major artist that came out that people have something to say about. Have, they've done something to get attention before that maybe people didn't think they didn't like. You know what I mean? Um, especially some of the older artists. What's the, what's the oldest the oldest artist there is? Now she's kind of like uh. You talking about Madonna? Madonna, for instance. Yeah. 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 I mean, they've done all. They they made their mark some kind of way. Yeah. That was progressive. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess Lizzo, if she's in, she's doing what she what she's doing. I think that the issue with that is going to probably die down unless she comes out with something else. But I, I had initially on our first show, one of the shows that we did in collaboration with, uh, with the team with you guys, I had a picture of her. I was trying to see if I put it up where she was actually posing nude, but you didn't really see anything. I know you saw that picture. If nobody 
nobody said anything about that picture. Again, well, it's different because guys, she was like in a public arena where ki- where yeah, kids and chill, where kids and children could have seen her. Like on her Instagram, only her followers can see that. Usually, I'm sure it'll get leaked out because everything gets leaked out. But the fact that she was live in public and you can't unsee that, uh, I think it was like an a, a too much of an attention thing, and I feel like it. To me, it just seemed a little bit desperate to me. I feel like I I don't think that she even had to do that. And that's my but opinion. Can I, can, can I ask you this? Um, on Real Rodney Love, she, when they were talking about it, all the other um, hosts were saying, oh, she's wrong, she's doing too much. But Lonnie Love said they are discriminating against her because she's a poor freaker woman. Yeah. If she was a skinny girl doing this, they wouldn't have made a big deal about it. So how do y'all feel about that? I think hmm. you're probably going I kind of think that's true, but I think if she had been a, even maybe not quite a large, yeah, and you know what, it's like the more you have, the more you see, and people, people get this, it's more, <laughs> you know what I mean, it's little, you know, and, and sometimes people that have more body, it's provocative, and it might even look good, but people just have, they get more attention, you know what I mean, because, uh, because it's more, more relevant, and it's larger. A little skinny lady did it. Uh, it probably would have said something about it, but it wasn't a whole lot going on there. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, and the more you have the, the flaunt, the more people are have to say. I think. <laughs> well, like like Dre was saying, if Beyonce or Rihanna did it, I think it still would have been a reaction anyway, a, a negative reaction, but. Uh, yeah, I think it'll die down, but yeah, I, I think it was a little desperate to me. I don't think that. Yeah, I, think I don't that, think it's going to be detrimental to her career. I don't think it will. Oh, no, I don't think I just, so. I just she think, yeah. Like yeah. I, I mean, they're advertising her next act. She, she's in some movie or, is she in a movie or some other musical production? They've been advertising her the, the new things that she's got coming up. Yeah. Like, I, oh, yeah, yeah, I haven't real. seen, I haven't seen anything doing. else about it. I see them moving on to her being, um, I think she was supposed to be considered entertainer of the year and when a magazine is giving her that accolade and she's getting other accolades. So the story seems to have died down a bit, but I don't know. They're, they're looking more at what she's doing and her talent right now. But I guess you're saying her talent, her talent and her gifts is outweighing what her, what she did. It's outshining that, I guess. That's why I'm saying she didn't have to do it, though, because I'm still a little bit mad at her, because I feel like... You're mad at her. Yeah, I'm a little bit mad at her, because I feel like it was, <laughs> it wasn't worth it. She didn't have to do that. I mean, if if she want to do that privately in her own home or on her own page or whatever, like, that's that's her business, but to put well, it out there in front of everybody... I, I, I have showed her skin before this incident, so I don't know why they just kind of blew this up, because if you, like I said, her social media you are so you are right you are right but yeah let's just go to the <laughs> <laughs> I will say this anytime you do something like that you definitely gonna get I mean everybody's talking about it so she just get more hot attention and that's just blowing her up some more so yeah I bet you her streams went up overnight after that incident too cause when every celebrity do something the music stream goes up overnight right you know so they probably gonna buy her CD they are gonna buy her music all right guys now we yeah. had this lady on the phone named london and london can you kind of let everybody know who you are i know i told them you my mom but can you just give uh-huh. them can you just give them a little bit more information about who you are i'm just uh independent um Local producer here, and not so local between two states of Michigan and Ohio, and television um, production, television shows, and we have an ADI Actors Club where we do film, we act on television, YouTube, we do live plays. It's just a whole lot of things that we do as a group of people. We have a lot of nice people that's involved with our production. Yeah, and I know uh, Dre also said that. Um... 
you're you're working with him on another project too, so oh, we're yeah. all collaborating together. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited about that project. Yeah. That's gonna be so much fun. Great, what's the name of it? Dre busy and then he already busy with all his other projects as well so quickly can you guys let everybody know how they can find you how they can connect with you in any way like um, any contact information you want to share social media etc okay I'll start um, Dre Bell Rock on Facebook D-R-E-B-E-R-L-R-O-C-K and Instagram at Dre Bell Rock that's Dre Can you give that 1-800 number out one more time? 800-875-0674. And we, are, we will be on blog, too. So you put a London, London Enterprise, you'll put us on the blog. So just about everything that we're doing as far as television and the acting and any videos or whatever, it's going to end up on YouTube, but it'll go from the television, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and the blog. Okay, London, you had a you had a couple of stories that you wanted to share with us here today, so Yeah, I was I was um on Facebook and I saw this and I had actually heard about uh Sean Jones because I work at the radio station, so I was one of the ones I heard that he had, he just died and he's only thirty two years old and he's like one of these wonderful great pastors. And so I was looking on here, there's a, uh, it's called Un, what is it called? Unfit, unfitchristian.com. And on there, uh, they had, they, the lady was on there saying, well, she thought that it was really wrong and it didn't make sense for him to die because he put his faith in God, but he didn't go to the doctor. And I'm like, wow. So, you know, and I think a lot of cases that might be true, but I, I just, I want you guys to look at it because. You know, I don't know if she was being a little cruel about his death, you know, uh, but she was really kind of discredited to him. He's gone now, but discredited him for having all this faith in, in God and just still not going to the doctor if he just died. She 
that and folk, but he was a very uh, strong singer, uh, you know, very dramatic. And I just really feel that he was an anointed man, you know, he could have been a singer, a priest. He, I mean, he had the audience. And if you look at some of his music, uh, he's a, a recording artist. I mean, he's an awesome brother, you know, and that's just kind of sad that he is gone. Um, it shows a video of him even giving a story about him, how he had a stroke while he was uh, singing at a church performing and uh, how he was you know, thanking God that he got through his stroke. But she was saying he didn't go to the doctor, but I think he did go to the doctor. Mm. Yeah, or I guess she was just saying he didn't really put his faith in a doctor. I guess that's a more to the story is go to the doctor when you need to and get checked. I don't know what you guys think about that. Well, I think that, you know, as far as doctors are concerned in medicine, my mom has always told me it's good to have your faith and your belief in God because God will meet you halfway when you're going through your healing process. But God has also put these doctors in medicine here on this earth to make you better. So I think there's a healthy medium that you should have when it comes to taking me- when it comes to taking medicine and going to the doctor and getting yourself checked out, and also have that faith at the same token. Yeah, I 100% agree, and I I believe that parents and people of faith and they should let their kids and their young people just put that word out there that you know god works in more than one way he can work through those doctors it doesn't have to be like a bible miracle for you to get healed you could be healed through surgery but god's still the one that's responsible for your healing but she had a lot of lot of uh, from, uh, uh, conversation on that unfitchristian.com talking about all kinds of things. I think she has another uh, conversation here talking about the millennial, black millennial, why they don't, why they don't want to attend the church. I didn't get a chance to get that one in, but um, I was, I want to, you know, look more into what she has to say. You know, maybe we can connect with her. She's talking about some real life. Yeah, it'd probably be great if you can connect with her and get an interview with her. I'm going to try to. Matter of fact, if I do, I'm probably going to have. I'm going to try to hook her up with uh, with your with your podcast, and also I would like to maybe talk with Dre about you know, yes. collaborate and get some of her information because so, you know that's some conversation right there when you talk about the millennial black African American millennial not attending church because they don't like what's going on. You know, we can talk about that and maybe shed some light on the good side of things too. Yes, absolutely. All right, Dre, you have another story for us. Okay, yeah, I want to talk about um, April Jones and Little Fizz. So, um, April Jones is the ex-baby mom of um, Omarion from B2K, and Little Fizz is also in B2K. And Omarion and April had two babies together, and then later on they broke up, and then April got with his bandmate, Little Fizz, who is considered his brother. They got together, and now they have a serious relationship. They're talking marriage, they're living together, and they're in love. (laughs) <laughs> and a lot of people are looking at their relationship like, why would you talk to his brother? It's not a real brother, but a bandmate who's had kids with her. Why would you talk to her if you were in a relationship with his bandmate at first? That's just doing too much, and what are you doing? So they say they're honestly in love, and they say this relationship is real, and they didn't plan on it, but they just fell in love. And it's been a storyline this whole season of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, the main storyline. And they just, they, they seem very unbothered. But Amarion, on the same token, he said he, he, he said he really don't care if they're in love, even though that's his old baby mama. But a lot of people are looking at them with their nose up, like, what are you guys doing? Uh, but how do you, how do you feel about that, Okay. You said, how do you feel about it? Yes. I feel like, um, it's a ton of people in the world. And out of everybody, maybe they could have just found other partners just because of the B2K. I grew up in the B2K era, and they they were so close back then. These guys were brothers. They were they was um, they had um, album after album, and it was seemed like they were very um, close. And for him to talk to his baby mama, I think that's just going a little bit too far. But then on another token, if someone is really in love. I guess there's a bit of understanding I have for the situation. Yeah, that that's a very controversial story, though, really. 
kind of put you in it, and if you have two opinions of it, so. Well, as I mean, Omarion is not um uh, supposedly not upset about it, and really, I mean, he didn't seal the deal with her, so. I mean, I know it's kind of bad because they are like brothers in a way and they so closely connected. But in the end, if they're happy and they're in love and I mean, I can't say anything else. I have to say I can't, I'm kind of happy for them. That's all I could say. <laughs> I think that's real cold for him to say that though. <laughs> I think that's even worse for him to be like, oh, we, I don't even care about this dude, so it don't matter. Like, I think that was a little bit cold, but. I'm... Well, they said Sid mentioned that he won't be giving his ex another storyline on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood because he isn't returning next season. Because I wonder if that's going to really be true. We will have to see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they say that sometimes. <clears throat> they disappeared and they might come back, you know. Yeah, they show all that success reality show. It may uh, show him leaving and then it may show him, you know, him. Yeah. Uh, Back. Yeah, they they want to bring the heat back. So so mm. the door is open. He probably can come back if he if he want to. He'll probably be back. Yeah. <laughs> to but keep that story the, going. The, the other thing I gotta ask y'all about. I gotta ask y'all about this. What do you think about the Clark sisters movie coming out in twenty twenty spring? Yay! Yeah, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. I just seen watching them uh Wendy. I mean uh. They were actually they were on the reel today. Yeah, I just finished looking at them. And uh, Jackie Tons and Taz, I got a chance to get a chance to, you know, I think everybody just about met them. Um, but the main one that I had a chance to actually meet years ago when her father had that church, the Berea Church, I think it was on Puritan, I can't remember what street is on, and she, Frankie prophesied and everything. I mean, like, whoa. She, you know, and she was just so down to earth. And uh, I got a chance to meet Jackie at the radio station. That it was before I really... I, I don't know how somehow I got to see, I missed her singing with the Clark sisters at a certain time and period. She wasn't there, so I got a chance to know her then. And I, I guess she's back. But, you know, condolences goes up to her because her, her husband just passed. So, and I know she's going through some things. But I think that film is going to be exciting. It's something good and historical. I think it's going to be yeah, awesome. I think it's going to be amazing, too. Yeah, represent Detroit all the way. And I um yep. I saw one clip, I think Kelly from Destiny's Child was giving them a lot of love. And it's just so awesome how they paved the way for so many people, even even those artists that are, are not gospel, you know. And then um, Karen's daughter, Kiera, she's out there now. And it's just a great thing that they left such a big mark. And they're still doing it. So, oh, yeah. and representing Detroit well, it's great to have a film representing us. So, the, the legendary Clark sisters, I love the idea. I, I can't so wait to see it. It's coming out, it's coming out in spring 2020. That's all they have said so far. So, it'll be out during spring in 2020. If it's going to be Netflix first or it's going to no, be on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, it's going to be on Lifetime, Lifetime, the Lifetime oh, wow. channel on cable. Yay. Oh. I would right. I would love to have like a viewing party. That would be so awesome. That would be nice. That's a good idea. Yeah. So London, did you have another story you wanted to share? Man, one last story. We have a lot of good things. This is a good thing. I know we all been hearing about the human trafficking. And I heard and saw and I kinda of researched that too, that two hundred and seventy seven people were arrested and that was somewhere in Florida for human trafficking, and it ranges from doctors, teachers, pastors, police officers. I mean, it's a host of people that you would think would be upstanding citizens with with a jobs of authority and um, humility. That's a part of this human trafficking ring. They were caught and arrested. So I'm happy that's a lot of people get your hands on for uh, human trafficking. I, we just pray that a lot of that will stop. And, you know, people that are getting taken and snatched and, you know, 
or whatever they're doing with that that, that will we ask God to stop that. But I thought that was some news right there. You can check it out. You can go online and check it out. Well, I say amen that these people were caught. And it just like opened your eyes to the fact that there's some everyday people involved in this because you're always thinking it's some type of creepy guy in the corner or right, right. or somebody weird, you know. But it's like everyday people, poli- uh, police officers, teachers, and all these people that you see every day. It's crazy. It's like an okay, eye opener. Pediatrics, pediatrics uh, was involved, you know. So now you you, you have to just keep your eyes open. We all have to keep our eyes because it's not just for the children, it's not just for girls or the boys, it's for men and women. For men and women. Yeah, this human trafficking, trafficking thing has been going on for so long. They had this movie called Traffic with Paula Patrick Cadden and Omar Epps, and they were talking about how women were getting trafficking. And it actually had a police officer in the movie that was mm-hmm. helping with the trafficking the whole time. Oh, wow. So maybe that's a little eye opener that this stuff has been going on in the mm-hmm. media. That movie came out about maybe two or three years ago. But they're just to let you know, they can put that in the movie, imagine what's going on in the real world. Real life, they got yeah. ideas for the movie. Wow. What's the name of that movie again? It's called Traffic. Okay. I'm probably going to try And it's got Paula Patton and Omar, Omar Epps in it. Yeah, I remember wow. when it came out, I was like, I want to see that, but then I kind of forgot. But yeah, I think yeah, that... I saw it because it came on cable and I watched it. It was good too, but it just really lets you get a high into how they traffic people. Yep, and I tell you what, I think I think God can do anything, and I think that the Lord just let young people get caught. So I, I'm a believer, even though all this all this is going on and it's really bad, that He's going to help our community. And all this, what we're doing, talking, and it's all on Facebook and the news, and like I said, the movies. And people keep talking about it. It brings people, uh, brings people to uh, awareness. awareness. Yeah, what's around them and the surrounding. Yeah, so we. Yeah, and I honestly think people get ideas from movies, just like when the movie Hustlers came out, and that was about J Lo and the dancers, and they were drugging the guys to get their money. Later on in the news, you heard I about these young girls drugging these guys to try to get their money. Yep, I think you're also correct too. That's the that's the that's the other flip side of it. Some people just look at something and say, "Wait, I'm gonna try that." So people people are getting made aware, and then other people are getting educated on trying how to figure out how they can do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't don't take the information and turn it around the wrong way. <laughs> and I'm praying for everybody out there that, you know, you, especially young people, and everybody just really stay aware because it doesn't matter your age or anything like that because anybody could be attacked. Or So we're just praying that everybody be aware. We're praying that it's just God's protection on everybody. God's protection on everybody. Amen. I'm looking for even more great things, though, because God, in the midst of what the, the different things that's going on, God has so many great things that's been going on and that's going to happen. So I'm looking for a great 2020 for all of us. Amen. Yes, amen. Good words. And Dre's going to be coming out with some music in 2022. Oh, wow. Yes, that's the plan. That's the plan. <laughs> that's my hidden passion. And I love singing, and I love music, and I'm a secret, I'm a secret low-key singer-songwriter, so I'm going to give it a go. I've been planning on doing this. I just always put it on the back burner. Which I hope, since he's going to do that, I hope that he would appear in uh, the music video that we plan to do next year, too, called Side Effects. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. Yeah, we, we, we want to make this, this deal go down, too. I did, wow. a music video, I did a music video um, earlier this year with my niece, China Potts. The uh-huh. Celeste Queen, I was in the video, and it was a nice video. My brother, Ethel Parker, Bill produced the video, and it was a nice song, a nice video. Where can we see it? So it's on YouTube, it's called Finesse Queen. Okay, we're going to check that out. And also, in 2020, I'm working on some merch to so everybody can get some merch from the Tea Podcast. So we're going to have mugs and, and coasters and little things so you can enjoy your tea while you're listening to the tea. So that's going to that's gonna come out in 2020, so look out for some fun merch, guys. Do we have any more stories, Dre? Let's see. I think that's about it for today. We got so much tea. Oh, the tea was boiling over. Really? And thank you, Miss London, for contributing to... Thank you for having me, too. ...to today's episode.
and we love you guys. Happy holidays. God bless you. Happy holidays. And see you in 2020.